Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 14, verse 10, um, Genesis chapter 5, verse 9, and Leviticus chapter 8, verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for another day. Thank you for being so faithful to us and never leaving us, always protecting and keeping us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Luke chapter 14, verse 10. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. All right. And so this is speaking about actually the the banquet. The Holy Spirit was showing me that this is, um, he said ball at one point. And so we are going to be in lavish and beautiful places. We need to be thankful to be there. It is an honor. It is a privilege to be invited um, to be correctly attired. And all of this is by the grace of God, right? We do not deserve all that God has done for us. And, and so we need to say, thank you. We need to tell him, thank you. Even now, before we see it, before we see the fruition of this great miracle that's about to occur, we need to say, thank you, right? Say, thank you. Because we, if, if it, if it were up to us, you know, we'd still be in our original position. We would still be, you know, even if we were saved, possibly not serving him, but out of his grace, out of his mercy, he wooed us. He drew us to himself. He gave us purpose. He gave us meaning. He gave us grace. He gave us strength to endure and go through the suffering that we go through in order to overcome. Amen. It's just a lot that he has blessed us with and we need to be grateful. So it says, but when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. And then also, um, you know, we just need to live that as a lifestyle, right? We need to live in a position of humbleness, of meekness, um, allowing others to shine and, and let God um, be the judge that whether you have done well or not um, and, and whether you should move up higher, but either way, be happy for others, allow other people to shine. Amen. All right, you guys. So the second scripture that the Lord gave me was Genesis chapter five, verse nine. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he fathered Kenan. All right. And so this is a lineage. And so um, Enosh actually means um, man or person. And Kenan actually means acquired. All right. And so um, 90 for the 90 years is purity and um, purity of doctrine, soundness. And so um, the thing that the Holy Spirit was showing me about these words is that this represents the um, acquiring of, of things, right? When we're about to um, enter into his kingdom and to enter into our eternal place of living, our rest, we're going to acquire many things. And um, the thing that first came to my mind when reading this, I was thinking, wow, 90 years old, and he finally fathered um, his son. It didn't say that that was his first child, but um, usually these people in these lineages had children very late and, 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 you know, they lived on many, many years. And so <laughs> the thing I, I kept I was saying to myself that it was late and I felt like Holy Spirit was saying back better late than never. And that's kind of how we are, right? You know, it's better to be late than to never have come, right? It doesn't matter if you come and begin work late in the day, or if you come and you began work early in the day, we all get the same pay at the end of the day. That is our, our eternal life and, and the ability to go forward forward into our eternal destination. We need to be grateful for that. We need to 
be thankful that we are counted in the number, right? Enosh and Kenan, you know, you don't hear much about them, but you know that they are counted in that lineage of Christ. And so we need to be grateful to be counted in the number of those saints. Amen. All right, you guys. So the third verse that he gave me was Leviticus chapter eight, verse three, and assemble all the congregation at the entrance of the tent of meeting. All right. And so this is representative of us going to, to the coronation. We are about to participate in this thing we're about to to wave our palm branches we're about to um, crown him king of kings and lord of lords right we have so much to look forward to we have so much celebration ahead of us and we should be grateful to be the bride, a part of the bride. We should be grateful to be counted in this number and spare the trial. Amen. All right, you guys, um, let's go back and look really quick. Um, but when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. And, and this is just such a beautiful rafter scripture, you know, of coming up, coming up to a higher place, coming up to a place of, of God opening the door and we're up there with him and we're honored to be included in that number. I just love that. That's so beautiful. Luke, that was Luke 14, verse 10, Genesis 5, verse 9. When Enosh had lived 90 years, he fathered Kenan. All right. And then the third one is Leviticus chapter eight, verse three, and assembled all the congregation at the entrance of the tent of meeting. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for assembling us, drawing us to you, giving us the grace and the mercy of giving us a place at the table, Lord God. You did that. God, we can't take any credit or glory. You did that. You get all the glory. Thank you for caring about us. Even while I was yet a sinner, you died. Thank you for doing that for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross, and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. Also, um, one of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Amen. Also, um, one of the things that Christ wants us to not forsake is the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and, and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. And also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.